Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. It's time to press on in the Union campaign on legendary mode of Ultimate General Civil War. And we are going to go into the Battle of Crampton's Gap today. And let me just show you real quick what my build looks like for this one. I did put my two points into uh, medicine, uh, which gets me up to six now for medicine. So that's a nice amount coming back at me at the end of every battle. Um, should be getting about 10% of my casualties back now. 12% maybe. Uh, yeah, I think it's 12 uh, but anyway, uh, three one-star brigades are going to be in my first division along with a couple of batteries of 20-pounders. And I'll talk through why I'm doing what I'm doing uh, as we get along. Uh, and then my more experienced brigades, four of them, uh, Fighting Fins, Prince of Wales, Carol's Marauders, Wolverines. Uh, I moved out. Um, where's the other one? Ohio Outlaws because they were the lowest in terms of number. So I thought it made the most sense to keep them as the one that I didn't replenish before this battle to kind of keep that average down low. Uh, and it works out pretty well for me. Uh, the numbers are fairly favorable for this battle. And I did buy 7,500 uh, uh, 1855 rifles uh, with 18 uh, reputation points. So that gives me a nice boost in weaponry there. Um, now, obviously, not all of these units are going to be used in this battle. Uh, it's actually going to be fairly even, about 12,000 on each side, but I'll have more guns. So let's go ahead and dive into this one. Okay, so the plan is basically this. I'm going to take my kind of newbie regiments here, or brigades, and I'm going to bring them over here, keep his attention, also draw his fire. And then I'm going to take my more skilled, my uh, more experienced regiments, brigades, I keep calling them regiments, and do an end around, come all the way up in here, and bring them, like from these woods, kind of southwest. Um, and then we'll simultaneously advance up the hill. So these guys are going to take a lot of casualties, but that's that's intentional uh, so that I take fewer from the other ones. And we're going to get these, get my, uh, my rifled artillery to kind of soften his artillery so that by the time I actually advance on them, they will hopefully be significantly reduced in strength and won't have nearly the punch and be able to take out as many of my men since they are three-star Georgia artillery there. So that's the plan. We'll see how it works out in reality. I expect I'll probably take 2,000, 2,500 casualties, something like that. But if I'm really lucky, I'll inflict five, six, seven thousand on him. So we'll see. When I press down on him from the north, he's probably going to get squeezed over into the side, so that may not work out as well as I'd like it to, but we'll see. So this was uh, historically a rear guard action by only about 2,000 Confederate troops. I think they were under Cobb, and um, they were facing down the majority of a corps from the Union, about 12,000 men, I believe. Uh, they were trying to hold and buy time for McClaw's division, who was part of the siege of Harper's Ferry. This is all three days before the Battle of Antietam, and it's, so it's all part of Lee's invasion of the North. And they held out really well, considering they were outnumbered five or six to one. They ended up losing about half their men. I think they took eight or nine hundred casualties. But they bought time, and that was really their job. I mean, so tactically, it was a defeat for the Confederates, but strategically, really, it, it they achieved their aim, so it really was a victory. So now we get two more units of rifled artillery in here. And then we're going to take these three brigades up and around. Now we get plenty of time after the, the timer ticks down. What I don't want to do is take the objective too quickly. Because I think that does actually kind of make the battle end after a s certain amount of time. I'm just not entirely sure how quickly that'll end. So let's slow things down here now. And I want to 
get all of my rifled artillery firing on these guns. And we're going to hug this line as best we can with all four of these brigades. And I'll get these guys to screen them so they don't get hit in their flanks. Like I said, they're going to take some casualties down here. Fry, let's try to get him a little more in cover. But he'll probably take 200 casualties before I get this attack into place. My hope is I weaken these artillery, these batteries enough to where as soon as I get one volley on them, they just disintegrate. And this is going to take a while, but that's just the way it's got to be. It'll probably be down to about a half hour by the time I get my attack into position. He's already low on ammo. He's probably got some skirmishers up here, so I gotta be aware of that. There they are. guys down here because when these guys start to break if they start funneling down this line here they're going to be in the water and they're going to be sitting ducks all right it's going to hurt their condition but i'm going to get these guys running up the hill so they get into position a little faster all right fry's lost 117 men so it's not as bad as i thought it would be so far Slow things down now. So my advantage right now is about 2,700 men. That should get significantly better by the time it's over. Okay, let's switch our focus onto this other one now. A little more. All right, 50 minutes to go. Soften that artillery a little bit more, but I think I'm going to go ahead and start switching to his infantry a bit. Let's fire on this one that's out in the open. All right. Carol's Marauder's condition's at zero. 12% there and 38 there, so we've got to give these guys a chance to recover before I start hitting them. Oh, he was still running. That's why he shouldn't have been. Start advancing slowly.
condition is still really poor. Might have been better off leaving the Wolverine down here. Yeah, I want to drive these guys off before I start advancing with the rest from the south. I want to be into his second line here and close to these guys before I advance up. As you can see, every single one of these units is three stars. I'm also going to move my guns up. There we go. Condition's still really poor on these guys. In fact, I'm going to let Princes of Wales hold back a little bit. Let these better conditioned units move in. Now the Wolverines are going to be out in the open, but they're firing down a pretty steep hill, and they're going to have support here. Yeah, let's hit that battery. All right, first battery's gone. Yeah, see, I probably should have kept the Wolverines down here in the woods. If I had it to do over again, that's what I would do there. No, we are not finishing. We haven't even taken the objective yet. out here and hit this other battery and wipe him out as quick as I can. He doesn't know where to break because he wants to break this way but my men are over here although it might be okay for me to let him break there because then we get him in the water so let's let's give him a little room to do that perfect go 
help these guys back a little bit, give them some space. I'm sitting just short of the objective on purpose. Alright, he just ran into my skirmishers over here. him caught right there hopefully uh, he's gonna get out of the water okay that's all right all right this is a bad bad spot here let's try to push through and get him out of these woods before I okay in fact princes of Wales are down to three percent conditioning this is not an ideal situation so I'm gonna back them up Okay, 16 George is going to get away. That's fine. I don't know how long it's going to allow this. I think probably once the contested timer ticks down, that's it. So let's try and cause as many casualties as I can in the meantime. Really? You want to come back and get some more 16th Georgia? All right. You guys are hanging on pretty well, considering. So my guess is pretty good. I'm, I'm at about 2,200 casualties. I figured I'd be 2,000, 2,500, somewhere in there. Doesn't look like I'm gonna inflict as many as I'd hoped because I think it's gonna end this battle before I could really do some damage by pushing these guys out of these woods. But I think the end result's still gonna be a pretty good one. Yep, that's where it ends. All right, so I uh, about two to one casualties, so we'll take that. 2,300 on my side, just over 5,000 on his side once you count everything. But all in all, a good day. That's a tricky one anyway, so didn't grab a whole lot in the way of guns. Nothing as far as officers go. The big winner today, the fight in Finns with 1,000 kills, but also 500 losses. Uh, Princess of Wales, 848 kills, 341 losses, so... Um, on my side, really nobody um, took more than 500 kills uh, that was fighting Finns, but that's a pretty easy battle. It's a relatively small battlefield, so there's really not a lot of options as far as strategy goes. But we lost 
2,800 men gained 7,300. So that puts my force pool up near 40,000 with about 32,000 in my army right now. So in theory, then, I could probably field about a 70,000-man army for Antietam, plus whatever I get out of South Mountain. So we'll see where that leaves me. So let me know your thoughts. As always, please use that comment section below for your strategies, your tips, what you think I could have done better, what you liked, what you didn't like. And we'll probably get to South Mountain maybe Monday and then on to Antietam by the middle of next week. Please hit that thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.